So, Alan, as we record, it's that time of year where everybody sits down to a big dinner and thanks everybody for all the great things they've received over the year. Arbor Day, yeah. Best day of the year. What would you say is your favorite Arbor Day side dish? Well, uh, geez, Arbor Day side dish. Um, <laughs> there's so many to choose from. So many. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to go with the uh, stuffed birch bark. Mm-mm. Oh, you know, always go for the homemade birch bark over the store-bought because it's always better. Always better. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're not buying farm-to-table birch bark, then, <laughs> I mean, really, what kind of Arbor Day are you having, Rob? You know what mine is, Alan? I, I go for the pulp au gratin. Mm. Yeah? Mm, tasty, yeah. Extra cheesy, extra chewy. That's how I like it. You know, normally they say cheese makes everything better, but in this case, it's the pulp that makes it great. <laughs> we do love pulp. We sure do. It's time. Time for a thrilling story of romance, adventure, mystery, anything with an expired copyright. It's time for another Interrupted Tale! Hello, and welcome to the show that usually ends. Yeah, <laughs> the music stopped. It kept coming back up. Well, hey. It's, uh, <laughs> it, it's, an, it's an epic day. It's, it's an epic story for an epic day, and it needs an epic soundtrack, Rob. Well... That's what we get here for another episode of Interrupted Tales, the podcast where my friend and I take turns reading stories to you, the listener, while the other person constantly interrupts. As always, I am Rob, and I'm joined tonight by the stuffing instead of potatoes, Alan. How are you, Alan? Um, stovetop for uh, dinner. I'm the th I'm the stovetops, Rob. <laughs> okay. I was. Just... <laughs> Sorry. I was briefly a five tops, too, and then they kicked me out. <laughs> Which one was the five tops? Uh, it was the one that I was in before the Commodore. <laughs> Commod the Commandants. <laughs> the Commandants, yes. <laughs> it was the one before when I was in the Commandants. Yes, they did Brick Tent, right? I don't. Um, yeah, that was after I left. <laughs> this week, we have a special tale of holiday cheer called Bert's Thanksgiving by J.T. Trowbridge. J.T. Trowbridge. That's right. Do we know anything about J.T. Trowbridge, or has it all been lost to the annals of history? Uh, I, from a quick perusal of uh, the most accurate uh, literary source... <laughs> the first Wikipedia article it came to. <laughs> he was a friend of Mark Twain and Walt Whitman, and he began publishing in periodicals while he was working at a pencil case engraving <laughs> factory. So don't tell me that you can't work at Stables and write the great American novel, okay? <laughs> wow, a pencil factory. Did he make nope, pencil no, toppers? No, 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 pencil in. Pencil case <laughs> engraving factory, oh. okay? So they they didn't make pencils. They didn't make pencil cases. <laughs> they just engraved the pencils. They just engraved them. All right. Well, hey, look, it doesn't matter what you do. It matters how you do it, Alan. And if J.T. Trowbridge is pulling himself up by his bootstraps, well, good for him. Yeah, Proves the system works. Yeah, what the, what system? The the engraving machine? Yeah, the whole the whole economy for engraving oh, okay. and the engraving industry. You know, what, what like that store in the mall. What is that store in the mall? Forever 21. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, everyone get ready cuz it's time to loosen your belt and take your cholesterol medication while we read you this week's tale. <laughs> At noon 
on a dreary November day, a lonesome little fellow, looking very red about the ears and very blue about the mouth, stood kicking his heels at the door of a cheap eating house in Boston, and offering a solitary copy of a morning paper for sale to the people passing. Paper, paper, get your paper to memorize while I stand here in front of you holding up my single copy of the paper. <laughs> Only got one. One penny gets you ten minutes. <laughs> extra, extra. If you want me to turn the pages for you, it's extra. <laughs> ten minutes is pretty good, I gotta say. You can pretty much flip through everything in that time. Oh, yeah. You could read The Wizard of Id and also... <laughs> Have time to see what kind of 1973 Camaros are for sale. Oh, that's that's I might need an extra 10 minutes for that. And sure, sure, that'll be an, another set. <laughs> but there were really not many people passing for it was Thanksgiving Day and the shops were shut and everybody who had a home to go to and a dinner to eat. Seemed to have gone home to eat that dinner, while Bert Hampton, the newsboy, stood trying in vain to sell the last extra, I'm sorry, the last extra left on his hand. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. As a <laughs> fan of the musical Newsies, I, I wanted this to be historically accurate. <laughs> Gotta go sell some more papes. I watched Newsies in the last one. Yeah, I, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, he stood in vain, trying to sell the last extra left on his hands by the dull business of the morning. Breaking news. Um, ah, jeez, the morning is... Uh, nation enjoys day dedicated to eating pie after a nap. Extra, extra. President does not pardon turkey. Says, hey, these are tough times for everyone, buddy. An old man with a face that looked pinched and who was dressed in a seedy black coat and a much-battered stovepipe hat, stopped at the same doorway, and with one hand on the latch, appeared to hesitate between hunger and a sense of poverty before going in. Four score and seven dollars ago, I could have afforded this dinner. <laughs> Shouldn't have spent that seven dollars. <laughs> seven dollars? That was a lot of dinners back then. Shouldn't shouldn't have scored four times either. That's <laughs> you got to keep that money coming in. Yeah, it was possible, however, that he was considering whether he could afford himself the indulgence of a morning paper, seeing it was Thanksgiving Day. Yeah, uh, what hungry hobo wouldn't turn down a side dish literally called stuffing in exchange for some hot Sudoku action? <laughs> <laughs> mm, really fills up the belly. <laughs> so, at least, Bert thought, and accosted him accordingly. Buy a paper, sir? All about the fire in East Boston. Oh, oh no, a fire in East Boston. I hope the Logan Wahlburgers <laughs> made it through. It would be terrible if someone purposefully targeted that and then the blaze got out of control. But, you know, maybe the consequences are still worth it. <laughs> And arrest of safe burglars in Springfield. Oh, yeah. Well, if you got a burgle, burgle safe. That's what I always say. <laughs> careful, with, careful how you handle that dynamite. <laughs> Is the lesson of the burglars that want to stay safe. Don't just wear gloves because of fingerprints. Wear them because so your hands don't get too coarse. Oh. <laughs> This is another hint from the safe burglars. I know. The safe burglars seem like they've gotten off track with their pamphlets lately. Well, that's the problem. Once you run out of the standard tips, you got to make them up. It's like Mythbusters. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's like we're not really testing anything anymore. Right, right. Yeah. Only two cents. Also, one very interesting story about. Old men being stalked by a serial killer posing as a newsboy. Come take a closer look, right? Right over here. <laughs> the little old man looked at the boy with keen gray eyes, which seemed to light up the pinched and skinny face, and answered in a shrill voice that whistled through white front teeth. You ought to come down in your price this time of day. You don't you can't expect to sell a morning paper at 12 o'clock for a full price. Uh, it's two cents. <laughs> And, and just so we're clear, 
there are only two discounts that you can do from two cents. There's one cent and all the cents. <laughs> well, give me a cent then, said Bert. That's less than cost, but never mind. I'm bound to sell out anyhow. You look cold, said the old man. Cold, replied Bert. I'm froze, and I want my dinner. And I'm going to have to have a big dinner, too, seeing it's Thanksgiving Day. Ah, lucky for you, my boy, said the old Morty. man. Morty. <laughs> <laughs> I cleaned up my act, Morty. <laughs> I don't belch anymore, but it sounds somewhat similar. <laughs> You've a home to go to, and friends too, I hope. No, sir. Nary home and nary friend. Only my mother. Whose name is coincidentally Nary. <laughs> her father was named Nat, and her mother was named Mary. And they were both veterans, so... <laughs> veterans of? <laughs> Veterinary. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. No, there's no... You don't have to take the Lord's name in vain on Thanksgiving. <laughs> I think the joke uh, was pretty good if you <laughs> let uh, it be unexplained. Stick to selling papers, boy. That's all I'm yeah. saying. Bert hesitated and grew serious, then suddenly changed his tone. And, and hop often. I told him to meet me here, and we'd have a first-rate Thanksgiving dinner together. For it's no fun to be eaten alone Thanksgiving Day. It sets a feller thinking of everything. If he ever had a home, and then Hank got a home anymore. Hank was my uncle, by the way. <laughs> yeah, his father was named Harry, and his mother was named Tank. <laughs> Which is odd, because he was my brother's mother. <laughs> but, you know, that Tank here or there he was my mother's brother is what i meant to say <laughs> no brothers yeah brother <laughs> this is the same people but they had two different names as... i you know it's very cold out here <laughs> it's more lonesome not to eat at all said the old man his gray eyes twinkling and what can a boy like you have to think of here i guess i can find one cent for you no, there's nothing in the paper I know. Yeah, just another out and brown column on the best way to make green bean casserole. And he doesn't seem to realize how morally wrong it is to use science as a prop for your own subjective tastes. Oh, sorry, I got off topic. We were talking about how you were a homeless waif who was definitely going to starve, right? <laughs> and another thing, kid. <laughs> This umami thing, it, 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 that's crap, right? Right? It doesn't exist. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Good luck with all that dying in the cold stuff. All right, see you. The old man spoke with some feeling. His fingers trembled, and somehow he dropped two cents instead of one into Bert's hand. Here, you made a mistake, cried Bert. A bargain's a bargain. You've given me a cent too much. Old Spice Swagger, a cent too much. <laughs> No, I didn't. I never give anybody a cent too much. But see here. And Bert showed the two cents, offering to return one. Oh, yes. But uh, one cent has turned into two cents. And look, what's this behind your ear? Another penny? Oh, no, that's, oh, uh, that's lice. Okay, you know what? Keep the pennies. Uh, keep the paper. Uh, I'm just going to back off real slow. <laughs> no, Have Matt. a great Thanksgiving, but <laughs> please don't touch me. <laughs> no matter, said the old man. It will be so much less for my dinner. That's all. Bert had instinctively pocketed the pennies when, on a moment's reflection, his sympathies were excited. Poor ma old man, he thought. He's seen better days, I guess. Perhaps he's no home. A boy like me can stand it, but I guess it must be hard for him. He meant to give me the odd scent all the while. Which definitely calls into question why he tried to bargain me out of one cent for no good reason, then. <laughs> he, he just likes the chase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't believe he has had a decent dinner for many a day. All this which I have been obliged to write out slowly in words, 
went through Bert's mind like a flash. He was a generous little fellow, and any kindness shown him, no matter how trifling, made his heart overflow. Look here, he cried. Where are you going to get your dinner today? The trash can at Arby's or the trash can at Boston Market? Because they're both my turf, old man. <laughs> this was the original Boston Market, so it was the mashed potatoes were fantastic. Oh, the original Boston Market. I get it. It's not the baby shark market. Yeah, I didn't understand it either. <laughs> Have you Very heard the Baby Yoda song? Did. That's a, it's a local joke, I guess. Yes. I don't even know what you're referring to. They changed all the Boston markets to baby shark markets during the Nationals playoff run. <laughs> Go Nats. Because that's one of the guy's theme songs. Oh, that's and what he plays course, when he comes out. That's right. I remember that. And of course... That's what you think of when you're going to Boston Market. <laughs> hmm. Do I want the quarter meal, the half meal, or the baby shark meal? Well, no, you definitely want to get a, a whole fin. Sometimes I like to get a whole fin and a half fin, okay? <laughs> oh, because, yeah. um, you know, you don't want to have to... It's hard to, to split a, the, the whole fin, you know? and. <laughs> You know, sometimes you can only get the little parts of it, you know? I like the gristle. Yeah, sure. Everybody likes the gristle. <laughs> That's why you get one and a, a half in so that the gristle goes around more. But I'll, they'll, then you're left with the cartilage. And, you know, frankly, everybody just takes the gristle off the top. Mm -hmm. And then you're left with the shark cartilage and it just sits in the fridge for a week. Oh, I hate that. You always tell yourself you're going to make shark fin soup. Never happens. I know, yeah. I can get a bite here as well as anywhere. It don't matter much to me, replied the old man. Dine with me, said Bert, laughing. I'd like to have you. It's been forever since I've gotten out the good chinette. <laughs> I'm afraid I couldn't afford to dine as you were going to, said the man with a smile, his eyes twinkling again and his white front teeth shining. So he must have one cent then. I, is this a logic puzzle, Rob? Did Raymond Smolian write this story? Did Martin Gardner contribute to this paragraph? Two homeless people are leaving for the Boston market at the same yeah. time. Hmm. Okay, hold on now. I'll pay for your dinner, Bert exclaimed. Come! We don't have a Thanksgiving but once a year, and a feller wants a good time then. But you're waiting for another boy. Oh, Hop Hofton. He won't come now, it's so late. He's gone to a place down in North Street. I guess, a place I don't like. There's so much tobacco smoked and so much beer drank there. And they always watch football instead of the parade. They're heathens. <laughs> yeah, they're not on at the same time, Alan. They 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 don't watch the rerun. <laughs> the pre and everybody knows that BTS comes on twice if you watch the rerun. First of all, everyone knows you watch the dog show after the parade. I only watch the puppy bowl. Oh, we're missing out. Um the dog show. What is the dog show? After after Oh, oh, that one. I thought you were talking about the uh, so for some reason, I was thinking of the um, the, the puppies destroying a room. <laughs> no, not not that dog show. That's a yeah, that's a dog show. Hey, I got a dog show for you. <laughs> oh, I saw one of those in Tijuana. It was it was oh, crazy. No. Bert cast a final glance up the street. No, he won't come now. So much the worse for him. He likes the men down there. I don't. Ah, said the man, taking off his hat and giving it a brush with his elbow as they entered the restaurant, as if trying to appear as respectable as he could in the eyes of a newsboy of such fastidious tastes. To make him yeah. feel... Sorry. Oh. <laughs> to, make... You had a... 
Comment on fastidious taste. No, I passed out for a moment. Sorry. Oh, okay. To make him feel quite comfortable in his mind on that point, Bert hastened to say, I mean, rowdies and such. Patriots fans, mostly. <laughs> for people, if they behave themselves, are just as respectable to me as rich folks. Poor people. Yeah, God you're right. Our... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, yeah, the Pats are going to go far. <laughs> I ain't the least. Hey, it ain't cheating if they don't catch you, and if they catch you, it ain't cheating because we're the Patriots. Also, Alan, if they don't use their hands, is it really a hand? Well, you know what I mean. I is that a reference to uh, Robert Kraft? <laughs> yes, it is. I just didn't feel comfortable saying hand job on the podcast. Yeah, I think we're all uncomfortable now. <laughs> Yeah, hey, hey, I think we're all uncomfortable now. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the wall, bogus. <laughs> I ain't the least might aristocratic. What do you mean it burned down? Ah, <laughs> uh, indeed. And the old man smiled again and seemed to look relieved. I'm very glad to hear it. He placed his hat on the floor and took a seat opposite Bert at a little table, which they had all to themselves. Bert offered him the bill of fare. No, I, I must ask you to choose for me. But nothing very extravagant, you know. I'm, I'm used to plain fare. Uh, yes, excuse me, sirs. If you're ordering from the penny menu, might I recommend a uh, dry-aged New York grip steak, mm. Mm, which is served with a steaming hot bowl of lobster risk. Containing only the most vintage seafood chunks our chef could scrounge. You know, I'm used to playing fair too, but then I'd only have pretzels. Uh, uh. You should fly in Frontier, they give you cookies. Really? Cookies? Well, I don't know. I don't. I don't fly in Frontier, so. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> but I'm going to have a good dinner for once in my life, and so shall you, cried Bart Bert. <laughs> generously what do you say to chicken soup and then why bort excuse me my newsboy is also named bort <laughs> yes excuse me what do you say to chicken soup and then wind up with a thumping big piece of squash pie oh squash pie that's my 47th favorite <laughs> kind of pie right after eels blood pie how did you know <laughs> Alan, I got a question for you. Speaking mm, of pie. Please, yes. Wait, what? Why is there not grape pie? Um, I mean, because there's still some hope left in this world. <laughs> you don't want... The idea of grape pie doesn't sound good to you? Uh, no, it does not. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Okay. I'm just saying they're cherry pie and that's strawberry pie. They're very, very close consistencies. I don't think that is true <laughs> there's also no watermelon pie rob there oh my god alan you really cracked this thing wide open for me i didn't even yep. think about that huh maybe because they're made out of water everything's made out of water alan well no i mean <laughs> i feel like i feel like maybe we need a, a animal vegetable mineral talk again Ron. oh okay yeah. Which one am I again? Uh, which, so you're down to question. You're down. You're up to eight, nineteen now. <laughs> How's that for Thanksgiving dinner? Sumptuous," said the old man, appearing to glow with the warmth of the room and the prospect of a good dinner. But it won't cost you too much. Too much? No, sir," laughed Bert. Chicken soup, 15 cents. Almost as good as Campbell's and only one-fifth the price in 2018 money. <laughs> Pie, they give tremendous pieces here. Thick, I tell you, 10 cents. I mean, it's basically a full squash. Can you believe it? <laughs> squash pie, ever hear of that? I, uh... I mean, I get the point. It's like pumpkin pie, but I feel like we... Technology brought us to the pumpkin. I don't think it is like pumpkin pie. 
I don't think you add sugar Oof. to squash pie. Oof. But, yeah. That's 25 cents. Half a dollar for two. Of course, I don't do this way every day in the year. But Mother's glad to have me once in a while. Here, waiter. And Bert gave his princely order as if it was no very great thing for a liberal young fellow like him after all. But where is your mother? Why don't you dine with her? The little man asked. She hogs the squash. It's the one thing I won't forgive. <laughs> She's a squash hogger. <laughs> squash hogger? Yes. <laughs> She's a low down, no good squash hogger. Some people just call it squagger. Is a just a shortened way to say that. Yeah, it's a, a squagger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bert's face grew sober in a moment. That's the question. Why don't I? I'll tell you why I don't. I've got the best mother in the world. What I'm trying to do is to make a home for her so we can live together and eat our Thanksgiving dinners together sometime. See, right now our hovel only has one plate, and so we have to eat Thanksgiving in shifts. <laughs> Some boys want one thing. Sex. Some another. Squash. <laughs> you, you know the difference between a squash hogger and a sex hogger? <laughs> no, what's the difference? A, a sex hogger screws automatically. <laughs> <sighs> There's one goes in for good times. Another's in such a hurry to get rich. He don't care much how he does it. But what I want most of anything is to be with my mother and my two sisters again. And I ain't ashamed to say so. Bert's eyes grew very tender. And he went on while his companion across the table watched him with a very gentle, searching look. I haven't been with her now for two years, hardly at all since father died. When his business was settled up, he kept a little grocery store on Hanover Street. It was found he hadn't left us anything. Well, actually, he left us a hill of beans, but they were repossessed by the Del Monte Corporation to settle our outstanding debts. Oh, man, at, at least it was Del Monte. Those Goya people, they just go right to breaking knees. Oh, that's racist. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I'm, I'm half Goyan. <laughs> we had lived pretty well up to that time. And I and my two sisters had been to school. But then, Mother had to do something, and her friends got her places to go out nursing. And she's a nurse now. Everybody likes her, and she has enough to do. You wouldn't believe how often catheters need changing. We couldn't be with her, of course. She got us boarded at a good place, but I saw how hard it was going to be for her to support us, so I said, I'm a boy. I could do something for myself. You just pay their board and keep them to school, and I'll go to work and maybe help you a little, besides taking care of myself. What could you do? said the little old man. Well, there's there's coal mining mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. chimney sweeping yeah. and probably some non-black lung jobs, too, I assume. <laughs> sure. Oh, and Amazon holiday labor. But some things are too inhumane even for me to stand. <laughs> That's it. I was only 11 years old. And what could I? What I should have liked would have been some nice place where I could do light work. Like a lamp factory. <laughs> or a roadie for Kiss. That also would qualify as light work. <laughs> and stand a chance of learning a good business. But beggars mustn't be choosers. I couldn't find such a place, and I wasn't going to be loafing about the streets, so I went to selling newspapers. I've sold newspapers ever since, and I shall be 12 years old next month. Okay, so mandatory retirement age. <laughs> uh, the Newsy Union is very strict about that, Rob. Uh, mm -hmm. Not about benefits or the health of their workers, but how old you can be and still be... Enough of a scamp to sell newspapers. <laughs> you gotta have standards, Alan. 
The last thing anyone wants is a 40-year-old guy selling newspapers. No, uh, that's, that's no more scamp left. It's just biology. <laughs> you like it? said the old man. I like to get my own living, replied Bert proudly. But what I want is to learn some trade. Like, maybe instead of selling newspapers, I could write stories in them. You know, something with a lot of job security. <laughs> that, that gravy train will never end. <laughs> Everybody's going to need a paper. <sighs> to, light, to light a fire in a cabin. <laughs> what else are you going to make shoes out of? Come on. Sure. Or regular business and settle down. And make a home for... But there's no use talking about that. Make the best of things. That's my motto. Mm, definitely not Samsung's Galaxy Fold motto. <laughs> make the best of things? Yeah, they certainly don't do that. <laughs> don't this soup smell good? And don't it taste good, too? They haven't put so much chicken in yours as they have in mine. If you don't mind me having tasted it, we'll change. I didn't back broth much. <laughs> I did double dip all of my bread, though. <laughs> the old man declined this liberal offer, took Bert's advice to help himself freely to bread, which didn't cost anything, and ate his soup with prodigious relish. Oh, I love that. It's the best brand. <laughs> I, I, it's too salty for me. Oh, yeah? No, no. I, I prefer... Uh... No, what's a good... What's a... Relish. You just like Digis. Yes, that's true. I'm right. I'm actually anti Digis. <laughs> You're anti Digis relish. <laughs> it's true. I I, I don't like uh, I don't like too much pro in my Digis jelly. Well, no. I mean, if you're gonna get it kosher, you got to get it anti Digis. <laughs> Otherwise, they can't certify it. As it seemed to Bert, who grew more and more hospitable and patronizing as the repast proceeded. Oh. Oh, God, don't I know it, though. It's, it's two bucks here for a podcaster, then it's three bucks there for a YouTuber, then somehow I'm in the $35 a month elite platinum patron tier for that guy who made potato salad, which I don't know how many types of salad can you really make each month. Come now. Won't you have something between the soup and the pie? Don't be afraid. I'll pay for it. Thanksgiving don't come but once a year. Well, it's really like twice a year if you count the day after Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think uh, really the Native Americans probably observe, actually maybe we should have let you guys starve givings, uh, pretty much year round, <laughs> yeah. I'm guessing. Yeah. I don't... Yeah, I think that's... Uh... I think that's somewhere in the bylaws that they're allowed to. Sure, I mean, I think that's a little more than once a year they think of... <laughs> Think about that holiday. You won't? A cup of tea, then, to go with your pie? I think I will have a cup of tea. You are so kind, said the old man. Well, Rob, that actually sounds pretty delicious. You know, a nice mm -hmm. hot mm -hmm. cup of English breakfast, slice of pumpkin or apple pie. Yeah, sure. All right. Here, waiter. Two pieces of your fattest. Mm. Mm-hmm. And biggest squash pie. Oh, right. <laughs> right. And a cup of tea strong for this gentleman. Oh, squash pie. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yes, and my tea and oh, the biggest, fattest squash pie. Could I, you know, uh, could I trouble you perhaps for an oversized napkin just in case I get any large pie-shaped food stuck in my teeth and have to, you know, pick that out very quickly. <laughs> I've told you about myself, added Bert. Suppose now you tell me something. About myself? No, uh, about me. Like, where did I come from? And is there a newspaper afterlife? I've gotten very little schooling, sir. <laughs> yes, yes. I think that would go pretty well with the pie. But the man shook his head. I could go back and tell about my plans and hopes when I was a lad of your age, but it, it would be too much like your own story all over again. Life isn't what we think it will be when we are young. Yeah, it's kind of like we thought it'd be, but you swap out the words 
adventure and rocket ships for say hernias and intolerance and it's pretty much covers it i like how heartwarming the story is getting it's really uh, bringing me up in this holiday season yeah sure if you were excited to spend thanksgiving with all your relatives and talk about current political events this story really is going to put you in the mood for that <laughs> you'll find that out soon enough I'm all alone in the world now, and I am 67 years old. Have some cheese with your pie, won't you? It must be so lonely at your age. What do you do for a living? Have some cheese with your pie? Yeah. I mean, I know it's squash, but you know what? It's going to make it real tough to market. Uh, sorry. It's going to make it real tough to market squash pie spice as a uh, flavoring alan i i don't think you've had good thanksgiving squash pie before it really tastes best slightly warm with mm -hmm. a nice slice of blue cheese on top of it oh that's not where <laughs> i wanted it to go Ooh. i have a little place in devonshire street my name is crooker You'll find me up two flights of stairs, back room at the right. Come and see me, and I'll tell you all about my business, and perhaps help you to such a place as you want. For I know several businessmen. Yep, know lots of them. You just go down to Devonshire Street and uh, keep checking buildings that are at least two stories high until you find it. You, you can't miss it. I'm in the back at the right. There might be a door, I can't remember right now. There's pretty certainly no number anywhere on it, and I definitely want you to drop by. Nothing, nothing shady about a business of two flights of stairs in the back room to the right. No, nope. Not at all. <laughs> now don't fail. And Mr. Crooker wrote his address with a little stub of a pencil on a corner of the newspaper, which had led to their acquaintance, tore it off carefully, and gave it to Bert. Thereupon, the latter took a card from his wallet. Not a very clean one. He's doing pretty well for himself. He's got business yeah, cards. Right. Wow. Not a very clean one, I must say. I'm speaking of the card, though the remark will apply equally well to the pocket. And handed it across the table to his new friend. Herbert Hampton, dealer in newspapers. The old man read with his sharp gray eyes, which glanced up funnily at Bert. Seeming to say, isn't this rather aristocratic for a 12-year-old newsboy? Yeah, it, it actually used to read even better. Herbert Hampton, dealer in newspapers, Esquire. Hmm. But I sold out of my single copy of Esquire, so... <laughs> and let me, let me tell you, it took forever. There was the one guy looking at a Zoe Saldana pictorial, and he just <laughs> stood there. I was holding it for hours. Yeah, still, though, you made 18 cents. Yeah, it was not a good 18 cents. <laughs> Bert blushed and explained. Got up for me by a printer's boy, I know. I'd done some favors for him, so he made me a few cards. Handy to have sometimes, you know. Yeah, lunch raffles at TGI Fridays, mostly. But you never know when somebody in the business world... Needs to put a newspaper boy into their Rolodex. <laughs> that's how business works, that's, right? That's exactly how it works. Hold on. I got just the guy. He sells newspapers. Yes. Yes. That's it. <laughs> that's his you're, skill set. You're going to let... Oh, well, well, you need somebody uh, who can yell shrilly and loudly? No, I got the boy for you. No, he's he's too slight to carry a sandwich board, so. Well, Herbert, said the little old man, I'm glad to have made your acquaintance. The pie was excellent. Nope, not anymore, thank you. Uh-huh. And I hope you'll come not another bite of that truly, truly delicious <laughs> squash pie. Oh, boy. And I hope you'll come and see me. You'll find me in very humble quarters. But you are not too aristocratic, you say? And confirmed by both your actions and your odor. Now, won't you let me pay for my dinner? I believe I haven't money enough. 
Let me see. Bert would not hear of such a thing, but walked up to the desk and settled the bill with the air of a person who did not regard a trifling expense. When he looked around again, the little old man was gone. Oh, or was he ever really there at all, Rob? Because now if you look at his plate, that squash pie is totally untouched. Oh, okay. So he was there. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. We, Settled. How do we know? It's like the... the it's the second sense. <laughs> Never mind. I'll go and see him the first chance I have, said Bert, as he looked at the penciled strip of newspaper margin again before putting it into his pocket. He then went round to his miserable quarters in the top of a cheap lodging house, where he made himself ready by means of soap and water and a broken comb to walk five miles into the suburbs and get a sight, if only for five minutes, of his mother. What? She's a nurse? She's not a prisoner of war? <laughs> Is she? She's in jail, right? What, they don't have to, you know, smuggle maps in, uh, in her chocolate rations or something? <laughs> Under the, under a, a blanket or something. On the following Monday, Bert, having a leisure hour. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, of course. Well, I mean, okay, it's a leisure hour, but really you should block it off on your calendar so people know not to schedule you for a newspaper meeting. You know, the benefits are non-existent, but the flex hours are terrific. Right. <laughs> On the following Monday, Bert, having a leisure hour, went to call on his new acquaintance in Devonshire Street. Having climbed the two flights, he found the door of the at the <laughs> he found the right building. He found it. Jeez, wow! I should have given him worse. I mean, uh, <laughs> hello, young man. He found the door of the back room at the right ajar, and looking in, saw Mister Crooker at a desk, in the act of receiving it's a time. roll of money from a well-dressed time. Visitor. For a thrilling Adventure story of romance, waited till the money was counted. Adventure, seat mystery, right, uh, one soul slightly anything used. with an expired uh, no copyright. Remember, it's an as is. It's time soul. for another. How do I do? I take the guitar to the crossroads. Find a guitar at the crossroads. Well, I, I'm the I'm the person giving you the guitar. Wait you a understand. minute. Wait, wait. Aren't you the devil? <laughs> uh, the devil's pretty confused right now. <laughs> I thought we were going by the, the tone of our voices. Hold but on. Am I the devil? I don't, you know, our storytelling <laughs> skills have not improved in 72 episodes. <laughs> then, as a visitor... Maybe we should fucking think of what these people are going to sound like before we start reading the story. <sighs> then, as the visitor departed, old Mr. Crooker looked round and saw Bert. He offered him a chair, then turned to lock up the money in a safe. So, this is your place of business? said Bert, glancing about the plain office room. What do you do here? I buy real estate sometimes, sell, rent, and so forth. Sometimes I build houses on my real estate. Or even hotels, or take chances on winning beauty contests, and sometimes I get real mad and flip the fucking board because getting one hundred dollars for rolling snake eyes is total bullshit. Carol, show me where it says in the rules. Why would you get other people's money? For finding a free parking spot. God damn it, Carol. Of course, you think this game is slow. You won't auction the properties when someone lands on them like you're supposed to. Oh, okay. Oh, Carol. I'm, I'm sorry. I got heated. I didn't mean to. Ha! What? How the fuck is Hopper's patrol car a railroad? Why would I have to pay... A hundred fifty dollars to land on Hopper's patrol car. <laughs> How can you charge rent in the upside down, Carol? It doesn't make any freaking sense. 
I want to play Star Wars Episode 1 through 3 Monopoly, where it makes sense. Coruscant would be a good property. Okay, the upside down is not a good property, Carol. Uh, uh, Hopper's patrol car is what got me more than anything. Uh, Why would you have to pay $150? Okay. Who for? asked Bert. For myself, said little old Mr. Crooker with a smile. Well, for myself and, of course, the other robber barons who as part of the ruling elite lead common folks for rent money. Mm-hmm. So for my when I say myself, I sort of mean the royal myself, you know, as in sort of American royalty. And to explain that a little further, I've purchased you. <laughs> no returns. <laughs> no returns. Bert stared, perfectly aghast at the situation. This, then, was the man whom he had invited to dinner, and treated so patronizingly the preceding Thursday. I I thought you was a poor man. I am a poor man, said Mr. Crocker, locking his safe. Money doesn't make a man rich. Oh, oh, wow, I, I must have misunderstood then as a... Uneducated semi orphan who struggles to survive on a daily basis, on a financial basis, the judiciary system operates then. More about how money doesn't make you rich. Well, you see, Bert, all you gotta do is find a friend and borrow $10,000. Now that's your nut, alright? <laughs> I've money enough. I own houses in the city. They give me something to think of, and so keep me alive. I had truer when she... <laughs> <laughs> like the, uh, yes, the uh, there's the 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 locks. I think of them sometimes. There's the <laughs> property taxes. Boy, that's a thrill. You know, what I love I love drapes. I just think of the drapes. That's right. I know it's all worth it. I like it when the drapes don't match the carpets, and let me tell you, that gets, that gets, that really gets me thinking. It gets a, it gets a bad rap when that happens. Yeah. You know? I had truer riches once, but I lost them long ago. From the way the old man's voice trembled and eyes glistened, Bert thought he must have meant by these riches friends he had lost, wife and children, perhaps. Or okay, just hear me out. Now. Maybe like really valuable gold statues in the shape of those people Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that he might have misplaced in one of the many, many rooms in his several mansions. Maybe the human chessboard he once had. Yeah, 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 sure. I really miss those people. Oh, the rooks especially. (laughs) Oh, man. I shouldn't have castled. That was, (laughs) that's on me, okay? That's on me. To think of me inviting you to dinner, the boy cried abashed and ashamed. It was odd. And a lot more gourd-focused than I had <laughs> anticipated. A lot of a lot of waif talk, too. More than I'm used to. <laughs> sure. And, and Mr. Crooker showed his white front teeth. It's like the fucking 1988 Kate Moss levels of waifiness. <laughs> And Mr. Crooker showed his white front teeth with a smile. But it may turn out to have been a lucky circumstance for both of us. I like you. I believe in you. Uh, You seem corporeal. That's a great start in business. (laughs) I I just hired a new guy named uh, Drop Dead Fred. He's in the back. Well, that's not a good business decision. I think we can all agree. (laughs) It's true. It's true. For anybody involved. And I have an offer to make you. I want a trusty bright boy in this office. Somebody I can bring up to my business. And leave it with. As I get too old to attend to it myself. What do you say? Well he could say. By real estate do you mean heroin. Because (laughs) 
you know, people don't usually come to a back room and give a guy a roll of hard cash as part of a mortgage signing. <laughs> Rarely. What, what could Bert say? Again that afternoon he walked, or rather ran to his mother, and after consulting with her, joyfully accepted Mr. Crooker's offer. <laughs> I'm glad he had to think on it. <laughs> Well, he could have gotten something better in the meantime, Rob. You you have no idea how the streets of Boston oh. actually worked hey. in uh, 1915. Yeah, he could have gotten something much better, like Scarlet Fever. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, something like they could have been hit by a horse. <laughs> well. A rich yeah, horse. Yeah, I guess he could have. Interviews. I, I wait. <laughs> Do you really accept the offer of getting hit by a horse, though? <laughs> Isn't that more of a, a tort situation rather than a contractual one? It's conditional. You, you get okay. hit by the horse, and you're automatically assuming the risk of I see, the you're, riches. You're part of a class action at that point. Yes. Interviews. You know, the horse lawyers take all the money, though. <laughs> It doesn't matter. They, you wouldn't be making anything if you didn't have the horse lawyers, so you know you put up with it. I mean, and listen, the more people that sign up, you're you're definitely not getting any money. You're just going to get the the horse getting hit by a horse monitoring service. Which, oh, yeah. Which they run the horses run themselves. Now, by the by the end of the whole thing, I ended up with four cents and a slight contusion. Really wasn't worth mm. it at all. Yeah. Interviews between his mother and his employer soon followed, resulting in something for which, at first, the boy had not dared to hope. A full buyout of his family contract. Yep. He got traded from the Boston nurse mothers to the Devonshire strange philanthropist. <laughs> what a career move he got there. Uh. And custody. <laughs> the lonely, childless old man who owned so many houses wanted a home. In one of those houses, he offered to Mrs. Hampton, with ample support for herself and her children, if she would also make it a home for him. Make it a home for him. Yeah. So kind of a, uh -huh. like a roommate slash different strokes slash hospice care deal? I think it's more of a pretty woman situation with him as... But she's a nurse, too, so no, it's no, no, no. double. Was... He's Julia Roberts. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> sure. I get it. Of course this proposition was accepted, and Bert soon had the satisfaction of seeing the great ambition of his youth accomplished. Life goals. Don't lose several limbs to hypothermia and malnourishment. Check plus. Also... Get mom some. Check, check, check. Wait, I don't think that's implied, but okay. Why didn't she also make it a home, a home for him? Hey, Rob, I don't know what kind of houses you grew up in, <laughs> but what? you don't just fuck errantly. No, they fell in love. It's a love story. No, not yeah. at all. Oh, yeah, this is his dream. Come on. No, this has nothing to do with that. Hmm. Well, that's disappointing. <laughs> Uh, is it? I, I thought it was going to be that he found an employer and a dad. Or is it better that this old man is not buying his way into no. the sexual uh, ownership of a third party on behalf of her or near orphan son? No, it's, it's like... Uh... It's like the king and I. It's just falling in love with the help, Alan. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, <laughs> you're just so you're just too classes to understand. I guess he had he had employment, which he had employment, which promised to become a profitable business, as indeed it did in a few years. He and the old man proved so useful to each other, and more than that, he was united once more with his mother and sisters in a happy home where he has since had a good many Thanksgiving dinners. The end. All right, Alan, that's...
that turned out to be a pretty jolly story. Yeah, well, uh, I suppose so. If um, you think that, um, um, well, I don't, I'm just going to say yes. <laughs> it's fair. That's fair. Uh, well, you know, I feel like I did learn something from this story. Did you? Okay. Yeah, and and uh, but I'm not sure what a lesson or moral I could have learned from the story is. What do you think the moral of this story is, Alan? I think the moral is that if you're a little newspaper boy, fuck your friend Hop Hofton. <laughs> What's he going to do for you? Might have been waiting for you the whole time. Who gives a shit? He's not going to give you a job in a house. <laughs> so what if he probably might have died of exposure waiting for you you got yours might have alan <laughs> he was definitely dead um i think the moral of this story is again if you coincidentally fall in love with someone that you've given a house and money to that's romantic it's a coincidence there's no expectation it didn't work for uh anna and the king of siam <laughs> it's not gonna work here ron <sighs> They didn't make it. They they didn't? Nope. And Jim and Pam didn't either. No, Jim and Pam definitely made it. You take that back. And also Ross and Rachel? Nope. Wow. Th that... Sorry to fuck over your Thanksgiving, but that's <laughs> the truth, dude. That's yeah, a real holiday armadillo for you. It's, yeah. It's, it's hard to swallow, and that's life. Boy, no. I should, no more armadillo pie. I couldn't possibly <laughs> eat another bite. No, I'm too full, and I think we're just about ready to put a bow on this week's episode, Alan. Uh, I hope you and everyone else will tune in next time for another exciting Interrupted... Here you are, Mr. Crooker. A big scoop of turkey squashing. And I know you're going to love this. Squash berry sauce in a bowl or in a slice with the ring <laughs> around it. It's whichever style you squash and want. Tail! Thank you.